Hello everyone, so today I am here to do another reviewing three classics. I know this is pretty soon after my first, like my one a little bit ago, like two weeks ago. Um, but I'm just kind of playing catch up at this point. <laughs> um, so yeah, I will say two of these books I did read quite a little bit ago. So I might not have as much to say. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, but yeah, today I'm going to be reviewing two Charlotte Bronte books and one Dickens. So let's just get on into it. First up, I'm going to be talking about the Dickens, which is Hard Times. I read this for my Patreon book club, and this was definitely, first off, the smallest Dickens ever. It's like barely, like my edition is like barely 250 pages. Um, and this one, I'm not gonna lie, I remember enjoying it. I remember certain parts that I really enjoyed, but at this point, I read this in November of 2020, and I already forget the majority of this book. So it didn't really leave a lasting impression on me, which I feel like most Dickens books really do. Like I've obviously read quite a bit of him. I've read I Love Bleak House and Great Expectations and The Christmas Carol, but I literally constantly forget that this book exists. So take that as you will. I do think I gave it a four star when I finished it, which is probably pretty accurate, probably between like a three and a four star. Um, but yeah, I don't really remember too much of this book, if I'm completely honest. The things I do remember are that I was shocked at how tiny it was, and also the fact that I didn't know where it was going to go. I definitely remember that being a big part of, like, my thought process, was I was kind of like, oh wow, I'm like 100 pages into this 250 page book, what is going to come next? Because it kind of felt like he was setting up a normal Dickens novel, like, you know, a thousand page novel. So I was a little surprised to feel like he was going at the same pace, but it was this tiny. Um, I remember also absolutely loving the character of Louisa, I believe it is. Um, and I loved how powerful of a female character she was. I was really impressed that Dickens wrote such a strong and empowered main female character. I remember there being quite a few scenes that I really really enjoyed with her, especially I think there was one scene where she and her father are talking and she basically like calls him out on her on his bullshit. Um, I remember just enjoying her as a character and like thinking that she really reminded me of Jane Eyre. Um, so that was the biggest thing that I remember was that character. But mostly we follow like this what like a just a school I guess I remember the beginning I read this very soon after I read uh, I watched the Queen's Gambit and I remember the beginning really reminding me of the beginning part of Queen's Gambit when they're like at the like orphanage school kind of thing it really reminded me of that and we have our main character Thomas Gradgren who is like very very stern on the philosophy of fact and that was definitely an interesting part of this book was this main character who was so obsessed with facts, um, but to the point where he would alter facts to make them suit his own facts, if that makes sense. So like at the very beginning of the book, I remember there being a scene with a couple of students where he's like talking to them and they say what they're thinking or what their experience was and he goes, no, that's wrong, that's not the facts, like this is what actually happened and they're like but that's not that's not true and he but he's like oh well it's my truth so it must be the universal truth so that was a really really interesting theme that keeps occurring throughout this book is this idea of like your truth is not the same as everyone else's I guess was a really interesting point of this but yeah, the back says that Thomas Gradgrind, uh, he's very stern and the proponent of the philosophy of fact, and whose ill-conceived idealism blinds to the essential humanity of those around him. So that's kind of where his daughter comes into play, where she's having a bunch of things happen in her life. Um, she's like becoming a grown woman, and he is just very like blind to any of her kind of problems or her thoughts or her feelings on anything that was really happening um and he was just very cut and dry like this is how it is but it's like his way of doing things kind of reminds me of a lot of men i'm not gonna lie <laughs> i feel like charles dickens kind of took a very um common trait in men and just like really made that like a big archetype caricature of a character um and yeah that's honestly all I really remember about this book, I'm not gonna lie. 
Oh, there was also this character called Sissy, who I remember really enjoying her at the beginning, and I thought that the book was going to be about her because we kind of get her story like very early on. Like I think her father dies or like abandons her. Um, so she is kind of like taken in by the main family. I thought this book was going to be more about her, but it really wasn't. I don't know why. Um, I thought that she would be really interesting. I found that there's so many books that I've been reading recently that like introduce a character who I think is so interesting and I expect the book to be about them and then they just disappear after like 30 pages. <laughs> this also happens in Villette, which I'll be talking about in a second. But yeah, hard times. I thought it was good. I remember really enjoying it as I was reading it, but I was also reading it during like writing my thesis and researching for my thesis and also doing finals. So I can't, I don't really remember it that well. That, that whole time has just been blocked from my memory. So I apologize that this is probably not the best review, but I do remember enjoying it. I would definitely recommend it, especially if you are trying to get into Dickens, maybe. A lot of his books are so intimidatingly long. This might be a good little place to start. Again, 250 pages, get a feel for his writing style. Um, and yeah, it was good. I liked it. And as I said, I have two Charlotte Brontes to talk about. I have Shirley and Villette. But I'm just gonna like throw out a disclaimer that while talking about both of these books, just consider I do definitely think that these books kind of suffered from expectations. I will always be honest about that. I went into both of these books with very high expectations. Um, from myself, but also from other people. So that definitely hindered my enjoyment of both of these novels. But let's start with Shirley. So I read Shirley, I think, last November? October? Something like that. Basically, I thought Shirley was Villette, firstly, let me just say that. Um, and basically, I kept getting told um, that I would absolutely love Villette by Charlotte Bronte because people thought it was even better than Jane Eyre. I picked up Shirley. I didn't realize it was a different book. I don't know. <laughs> but yes, I went into this expecting it to be better than Jane Eyre, which if you guys didn't know, I read Jane Eyre for the first time ever back in 2020, at the very beginning of 2020, and it remains one of my favorite classics ever that I've ever read. I totally understand the hype for it. I read it for class absolutely loved it so basically when I kept getting told oh she has a book that's even better than Jane Eyre I had way too high of expectations um and they were wrong <laughs> so surely the problem I had with this book is it's super fucking boring it is so mind-numbingly boring again this is one I don't really remember that well I feel like I was like my eyes glazed over at one point the only good thing I remember about this book was the female friendship between Shirley and god what was her name Shirley and Caroline that's the other girl's name Caroline but yeah they had an amazing female friendship that I truly loved like if I ever have to write a like an essay, like an academic essay about like female friendships in classics or in the Victorian era or something like that, I would 100% go back to this book because their friendship was phenomenal, amazing female friendship. Really, really, truly loved that part of it. Um, there was some amazing social commentary and feminism in this book. Hardcore loved those parts. The problem was that this was a pretty thick book and those parts of the book firstly only started about 100 pages in. I think we first meet Shirley 100 pages into the book and it's just surrounded by such boring things happening. It wasn't even boring in the sense of like I feel like all like classics have like kind of like boring like politics or like drama that you don't really care about. This was just mind-numbing boring. Like I don't I I could not. Again, I don't even really remember what fucking happened in this book because I think my eyes glazed over for half of it because I just could not bring myself to care about anything besides Shirley and Caroline. Like, they were the only people who mattered to me. Um, and I felt like they were, again, they were only the, people, the only two people I was supposed to care about. So it just did not grab my attention in the way that I had been hoping. And again, I very much expected to go into this and love it more than Jane Eyre, which 
obviously didn't happen and that didn't help the fact that I wasn't enjoying it because I kept comparing it to Jane Eyre and again that is a me problem if you go into this not expecting it to be as good as Jane Eyre you'll probably enjoy it more but I do think I ended up giving this like a two and a half out of five star again if you're in like academics and you need to write something about a female friendship or if you just want to read about a female friendship in a classic because obviously those don't really exist too often and especially with this much depth to them I would definitely recommend this but I don't I just don't think it was that great of entertainment that was the thing I didn't read this for a book club I didn't read this for um, a class I read this purely for entertainment and enjoyment um, and it wasn't. It wasn't that. I think it might have been better if I had read it for a book club or a class because then I could have at least like discussed it with people but for the most part this just bored me. So two and a half out of five stars for Shirley. And then I actually picked up Villette. <laughs> this I read with my Patreon book club in March, right? March, I think so. But this one, again, I went in with way too high of expectations. Again, every everyone and their mothers was telling me that this was better than Jane Eyre. And like, it might be a better book than Jane Eyre, but it had nothing that I actually enjoyed from Jane Eyre. Like, I don't know why Charlotte Bronte's books have been so drastically different. I don't feel like her writing style has been consistent at all, or storytelling ability has been consistent at all. But um, yeah, this book, how do I talk about this? This is, I'm just gonna say it now, I gave this four stars because my enjoyment and my rating would probably have been a three, but I can recognize that it really is like, as a piece of literature and a work of writing and craft, it's probably a five star. But for my entertainment, it wasn't. So I gave it four stars. So what did I like about this book? I enjoyed some of the characters. Again, this, like I just said about Hard Times, this opens with a character named Polly who I just think would have been so much more entertaining to follow her. I don't know why we got introduced to her and like I really started caring about her and her plotline and then she just is gone after 30 pages. Like I, she comes back but like I was just like I don't care about our actual main character. Um, I really did enjoy a lot of the characters. I enjoyed a lot of the commentary. One thing in this book that I talked a lot about on my Patreon was um, the fact that this book was written after Charlotte Bronte's brother and sisters died and it is colored by her sadness and isolation after those deaths. And um, one thing that I really really loved in this book is our main character, Lucy Snow. She definitely experiences bouts of depression and this is obviously written way before we get an actual word for what depression is. Depression is a pretty recent kind of mental illness that has actually been defined and studied. So this was way before we ever knew about something like that and I think that those parts are so magnificent um, and so perfectly written because they are completely void of any cliches. Like I feel like nowadays when you read a book about a character who has depression um, or is experiencing depression, um, it just has so many cliches and so many metaphors that are so overused to discuss mental health. But this book, with a character who the author doesn't actually know what this is and it hasn't been really explored, the parts with the depression are so, so good. Like, they are so raw and real and kind of intense to read, I'm not gonna lie. So I loved that. I also really enjoyed the kind of conversation that, again, a lot of us talked about on Patreon, where there's the, like, inner versus outer of yourself, kind of like public versus private self. Um, I thought that that was interesting. I didn't, like, the thing is, I think that was something that I didn't like in the book was um, one of my biggest problems with Lucy Snow was she would just like snap change her opinions without like actually telling the reader besides just being like, never mind. <laughs> like there's two men that she kind of falls in love with throughout this book and both times she's like, I hate this guy. He's a dick. I fucking hate him. And then literally 
at the drop of a hat, he, she's like, I might have been too harsh. Actually, he's so sweet and nice. Emily, so your opinion has just changed because you have a crush on him now. Okay. <laughs> but I don't even know if I said this follows a young girl named Lucy Snow who becomes a teacher at a school called Villette. And yeah, there's again romance and different things happen and she becomes like a good teacher and everything. Um, one of the things that I also really didn't like about this book with Lucy Snow was I did not like her as a character. I Sometimes I forgot she was a character. I don't know how to explain that. Like she's our narrator and she's our main character and there were so many times that I completely forgot that she was actually a character and not just a narrator. Um, she had very very little personality. She had very very little actual anything to her of substance. Um, and I just didn't care about her. There were so many times I just completely forgot she existed, even though she's literally our narrator. Um, another thing that I didn't care for in this book was the fact that it takes place over quite a long period of time, and you don't ever really feel that passage of time. Like, I think there's like 10 years or 11 years that go by, and I literally didn't know that until we meet a character and they're way older, and I'm like, when did that happen? Like, what the fuck? When did all of this happen? Um, it was very jarring. I also think that comes from the fact that this book has a problem to me personally, that this told so much more than it showed. Like, it is so much in Lucy's head that, again, sometimes I forgot she was a character. And two, nothing is really shown. Like, she just tells us everything and I don't like that. I personally don't like that. That very much felt like I was, it made me feel like I was being kept at an arm's length from the characters and the plot. And again, I had no clue how much time had passed. I had no clue, like, anything that was going on in this book. So I just wasn't a big fan of this one, unfortunately. I feel like talking about it, I wouldn't have even given it, like, a three star. I probably would have given it a two. Maybe I should rethink my, um, star rating because this really did it just didn't do much of anything for me um again there were certain parts that i enjoyed i enjoyed some social commentary i enjoyed the bouts of depression that the character faces um i enjoyed a couple of the side characters like polly and geneva geneva i really enjoyed the gothic elements there's kind of a haunting that happens in this book which i really enjoy i think charlotte bronte does a great job at writing gothic um and i really enjoyed her writing that was really about it. I just didn't care for this book. And again, it might have been because I went in with such high expectations. So yeah, that's my review of Valette. I'm sorry. <laughs> So yeah, those are the three classics that I'm going to be reviewing for today. I would love to hear you guys' comments on these books if you've read them or if you haven't read them, what you're thinking kind of thing down in the comments below. But anyways, I love you all and I'll see y'all soon. Bye!